Welcome to the beginning of a new devotional series through our Lenten study. And at the beginning, we start with a beginning, a genealogy from Matthew chapter 1. It's the storyline of the birth of Jesus Christ. Have you ever come upon one of those passages in Scripture that just has a bunch of names? And you wonder, maybe perhaps like I do, why do we need all these names? Well, friends, the beginning is a paragraph of paradoxes. And you almost get lost reading the names. You go, what are these names here for? Well, they're here for a reason. Names that are significant. Names that say to us stuff like, uh, Salmon was the father of Boaz by Rahab. And Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth. And Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David the king. Rahab, who worked the red light district down in Jericho. David, who had Solomon by Bathsheba. This is a kind of paragraph of paradoxes. Rahab, a prostitute, David, an adulterer, whose son who becomes the king is with the woman whose husband he murdered. I mean, it just, none of it is pretty. And yet all of this points to one central figure, one major voice in person, Jesus the Christ. His line, the lineage of people from which he hails in a physical sense, are prostitutes and adulterers and thieves and folk who should have known better. It is to say that God doesn't have to regard where you come from, the line out of which you emerge to determine your path. But God can, in spite of who you are and who they've been and where you come from, can make you somebody special. God is able to do something new, wonderful, and amazing, a beginning out of something that was crooked, twisted, and, and broken. If that doesn't make you feel better, I don't know what will. He can take the paradoxes and weave them together for a new beginning. And I hope that this season, while you and I are seeking the Lord in fasting and in praying, that we will let God rewrite our story, regardless of the past, the trauma, the bad decisions, and all of that. May you feel this season in Lent that God doesn't condemn you, but that God forgives you. And then he's able to rewrite your story, whatever it may be, to point for his glory and for your good. It's our time for God to write a new paragraph with our paradoxes. God bless you. Let's fast and pray together.